to the Affair Care podcast. Uh, my name is Cindy Taylor. I'm the co-founder of Affair Care, along with my dear hubby, David, who is the man behind the camera. We, in our ongoing series that is about um, tools that you can use for reconciliation. Um, in particular, uh, we've had a little five-part series about uh, the, the reconciliation tool. Last week was about the love extinguishers. And this is one that is most often look overlooked with traditional counseling because um, people people don't like to look at themselves and think you know what might I need to to do and change and improve on my own self that has been putting out the flame of love and also they don't like to um, have that vulnerability with their own or the spouse can say to them well actually you've kind of been doing this and it hurts me um, so this one is often overlooked and this is one of the reasons why frequently uh, when you go to marriage counseling it'll feel like you know your wheels are spinning you're not you're doing a lot of stuff but you're not getting any you're not getting forward and it's because you are usually working on love kindlers and then you still continue with the law of extinguishers, so you don't ever actually move forward. It's like a step forward, step back, step forward, step back, and you get nowhere. So what you need to do is stop the extinguishers and add some more kindlers, and then it's like two steps forward, zero steps back. Two more steps forward, zero steps back. And you can see how that would rebuild. Today is part four in our series, and we're going to be discussing the love kindlers questionnaire and uh, why this is important in reconciliation and how it will help you your marriage recover after an affair. So the first thing is that you'll want to go to um, the Affair Care Quizzes page. We'll put the link for that right here, the Affair Care Quizzes page. And you're going to want to scroll down a little bit till you see the one that says Love Kindler's Questionnaire. And you're going to want to go through the questionnaire together and you would fill it out as if you were answering for yourself. And then you have your spouse fill it out as if they were answering for themselves what kindles love for you, right? And then you share each other's questionnaires, very similar to the extinguishers. In case you don't know uh, what love kindlers are, we have got uh, extensive documentation on the site about it. But in particular, let me, I'm, I'm going to refer you to, to, to this, this link right here. And that's the love kindlers, what are they? And that will really pretty much explain everything. So I don't want to reiterate everything on that page. In a summary, the love extinguishers, you know, we talked about last week are things that put out the love in your marriage and they're kind of actually causing harm. And it's maybe uh, a habit you have that is just continuously chipping away and causing harm. So we wanted to stop those things that are causing the harm. Well, this week, um, what we're talking about is the kindlers. These are things that kindle the fire and the blaze and the flame of love in your marriage. Back in the day when you and your spouse met, there were things about each other that you really liked that kind of drew you together. These are the little things that you said or did or act, you know, however you acted, that caused the flame of love to kindle in your marriage. And so what you want to do when you're rebuilding after an affair is at the same time, you want to stop doing the things which are putting out the blaze, and you want to start doing more of the things that started the blaze in the first place. So, for example, what often happens is um, you're, you're, when you're dating, right, you'll take the time and you, you get dressed up, you do your hair, you do your makeup, you know, wear, wear a skirt that's short and kind of flirty, wear a blouse that's, you know, clinging everywhere, and you look good, right? And for the guys, the same thing. You comb your hair, you put some of the stuff on right here, right? You're smelling good. Um, even if you're wearing jeans and a t-shirt, it's nice fitting jeans, right? Not the sloppy ones. And you're wearing a t-shirt that, you know, maybe shows off your muscles a little, and you're you know, looking and smelling kind of nice. You make a little bit of effort for each other. And so you also, you can't wait to be together. You want to talk to each other. You want to spend time together and stuff. And so eventually what happens is some of the stuff that was uh, back in the day that was of interest is the same kind of thing that will rekindle in love now. But what happens is people, for example, they go from being 25 <laughs> to like, 
35 or 40. And, you know, um, it's the same general kind of thing. It's, it's going to morph a little. So, for example, back in the day when you first met and it was college, you loved him because he'd sit and talk to you. And he actually would seem to be interested in stuff. Now, when you're 40, um, it's not going to be that you want him to be 25 again. So much as um, now you appreciated back then that he would sit and talk to you. So you want a partner who is still emotionally invested in wanting to hear you talk, maybe has some topics of interest that are similar to your topics of interest, maybe politics or religion or something that you guys both, you know, like to talk about together. So you're going to uh, try to rekindle those, those things. The way that you go about doing it is you go to the uh, Fair Care quizzes page and you, you do the questionnaire. And um, you're going to look at the question. It's going to ask you about, like, from an emotional commitment, um, what were things that, you know, that you were, when you were meeting your spouse's needs, were they, what were they doing that made you feel loved, that made you feel valued, respected? And then you can go through and say, like, um, yes, this is important to me. And yes, I like the way my spouse is doing it. For example, maybe it's important for you to be admired, right? But you don't like the way your spouse admires you. Or maybe it is important for you to, you know, you don't care about being admired, but they're admiring you all the crazy. And it's like, yeah, what they do is fine. Don't, don't need to change that part. So what you want to do is go through each of the seven different kinds of um, love kindlers uh, and give your spouse a, a grade on the two things, right? Uh, is this important to you? And how are they doing, basically? And then you switch papers. Now, last week, if you remember, I suggested that you guys uh, maybe just get together, you know, have agree to have a meeting and then swap papers because sometimes it's really hard to hear, hey, you're not doing so great in at this, right? And that, and that can be um, the kind of thing that would lead to an argument. And we don't want to do that, right? But in this instance, um, it depends on what you're, you know, what you wrote. You might want to get together and say, yeah, it's okay. I think we would be all right if we sat and talked to each other about these and then just go one by one down the list. Or it may be that you say, you know what, let's keep it, conti continue to keep it consistent and just swap papers and then we can talk after we've read each other's papers. Because again, you know, let's say one of them is physical commitment and Sometimes it's hard to hear if you're somebody who's struggled with your weight your whole life and your spouse is saying that your weight is beginning to turn them off. It can be really hard and disappointing to hear that. But by the same token, you do want your spouse to be honest with you. And if that's what's happening, that is to say, if they honestly are beginning to be turned off by your weight, you want them to tell you. Uh, again, even though it may hurt you, right? The goal of this particular quiz, if you will, is not to say, like, for husbands to say to the to their wives, oh, I don't like the way you look, and for wives to say to their husbands, oh, I don't, you don't give me anywhere near enough money. That's not the goal. The goal is to say, like, maybe if, if this is a, a, the physical commitment is a thing for the guy, that he would say, just letting you know, that that is something that is uh, of importance to me, that can affect the way that love is kindled within me. And so, for example, if your husband is one that has that physical commitment need, that doesn't mean that he thinks you're ugly. You know, don't go there. Don't put yourself in that spot. But rather, that it is somewhat important for him, for, for, for you to dress in ways that complement what you do have, to, to make the effort to do something with your hair, uh, to wear makeup. Um, so he can let, give you a guide. Now, some guys are really turned off by makeup. I, you know, how, David is somewhat that way. He doesn't like a ton of makeup. It looks fake to him. And he would rather have a real person, right? So I'm cool with that. I'm, I'm, but he does like me to, to dress up a little bit if I can and um, to wear things that are uh, um, attractive to the body type that I have realistically that's naturally mine. So that's the, what a physical commitment is. Same thing for financial commitment, right? A lot of times guys feel like their wives are saying, you don't give me enough money. You don't provide enough. You're nag, nag, nag on the money and all you are is a wallet. But in real life, some women actually, um, you know, if if there isn't financial like security, the, it can take away from the love. And it's not because like they love money, but more like once I know the bills are paid and the kids and I are taken care of, I can relax a bit and I then can enjoy you. 
See what I mean? So maybe what, what the deal would be, if they're feeling tense about it, it's not so much that they're saying, you have to have 16 jobs and blah, 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 but more like, um, I do feel tense and that helps me to not, like, I'm in a position where I'm not feeling the love, but if we do this and this and this, I'm willing to do that, we would feel less stressed with money, and then I would be able to relax and love you better. Does that make sense? So you just need to actually kind of talk about it from a point of view that's not like they are attacking me. Rather, um, they're trying to express what really actually makes love easier for them. And then sort of ask yourself, well, what can I do on that um, topic that would uh, express love to my spouse? Because, for example, if you're a person like myself, uh, you can see I'm not a skinny person. And so if my spouse says to me, physical attractiveness, um, you might jump to that a fear of, of not being skinny, right? But in real life, I know what he's saying is not be, he doesn't say be who you're not. It's more like, you know what God has given you? Well, work it, girl, because you've got some stuff that's attractive. You know, don't be afraid to let me show it. Now, you don't want to show it to everybody, <laughs> but let me see it. See what I mean? So that's the same thing with the financial stuff. You know, maybe you're not the guy who makes, you know, 200, 300, 400,000 a year. That's cool. But be the guy who, like, you do dependably pay the bills. So that um, we've got it narrowed down to these such and such bills, but they are paid every month. And you're okay. And then they, then she can relax a little bit. And, 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 and by the way, we have this amount for a little bit more fun. That would be something I can spend a little something on you. See what I mean? So you work with it together. And then this is how, then you start to, to practice, like, okay, now you know your spouse is an introvert, and that doesn't mean they don't want to take you out, it just means they like it at home, so make your home a castle. And from the other one, you've learned their love language is to be admired, so you admire how wonderfully they cooked that meal. And then you learned from the extinguishers that calling them a name is something that really turns off the love in their life, so you don't say something that's going to be like all critical and mean. And then you learn from this one, the Love Kindlers, that they really like family commitment. So guess what? You spent, hey, honey, why don't you take time after, you know, after you finish the dishes or whatever, take time for yourself. I'm gonna put the kids to bed tonight. There you go. You've just learned how to love your spouse their way. So they are hearing love. Does that make sense? And that's where the goal is with this, is that like I would show my husband love the way that he hears it, not the way I hear it. And then likewise, he gets to know me, and he is showing me love the way I hear it, not the way he hears it. So, okay, uh, next week we'll be diving into the REBT, and look forward to having you there. Um, thanks so much for joining the podcast. Hope you have a great day. <laughs> Bye-bye.